Fixing the veil on her head, a woman in her late twenties named Lee Wayne looked at the mirror. The to-be bride's face was looking beautiful due to the bridal makeup, but the bridal glow was missing from her face. She was set to marry someone her father had decided as her groom since her childhood. She was going to marry her father's best friend's eldest son, Liam, a man in his early thirties, a very passionate dermatologist. She had known him since childhood. He is a gentleman, but uh, they never interacted with each other that much. She was always passionate about business, and he was about medicine. So most of the time, they couldn't find any common topic to discuss. Am I doing right by agreeing for this marriage, or should I have? Her chain of thoughts were disrupted when she heard her mother's words. You were looking gorgeous, my child. Such a pretty bride. Wayne saw her mom standing her through the mirror and smiled at her. She was about to reply, but her father suddenly entered the room while panting. His forehead was filled with sweat drops. Both Wayne and her mom frowned, seeing him. What happened? Why instead? Why are you panting? Liam Liam went to his important conference teaching this wedding. Why is mom? What? How could he? Now what will we do? Our daughter Wyan will she be left alone at the altar now? Worry clouded her mind hearing him. Wyan's eyes White in hearing Liam's brother's name. But how could we just do this? We don't seem to have any other option. If today Wayne's wedding won't happen, then people would talk dirty behind her back. She would be forever called a left out bride. The bed was filled with white and red rose petals. She was looking down at her lap as she was feeling anxious. She didn't even took off her wedding dress yet. She was anxious because today was her wedding night. Sure, she knew very well today she had to spend night with her new husband. But previously it was Liam with whom she thought to share her life, her marital bed. But so she, she was all prepared to ask Liam time before they consummate their marriage. But now, now the tables were turned. Instead of Liam, she was the young's bride. She was bride of a man whom she had given her heart, despite previously knowing very well that she was going to become his brother's wife in future. She had given her heart to a man who always used to tease her. She had given her heart to a man who always was her academic rival. She had given her heart to a man who maybe never saw her as his woman. Now, now, what should she do? Should she give in today if he asks for a wedding night, or should she wait, just the way she thought previously? 
The question was, would she be able to keep herself away from the man whose she always wanted to become wife, whom she always considered her man? He must be very upset, even angry. She was thinking all this when she heard the door knob cut twisted. The door cracked open and Thayang entered the room. A smirk appeared on his face when he saw her sitting on the bed. He went near her. I see, you were waiting for your husband to help you getting out of your wedding dress. His teasing voice reached her ears and she immediately looked at him. She wanted to reply something very witty, but strangely nothing except her lips. Instead, her cheeks were adorned with a faint pink hue. No reply. Seems someone is really shy right now. He looked deep into her eyes which seemed to make her intimidate. To hide her obvious pink cheeks, she looked away from him. I haven't even talked dirty to you and you are looking away from me. Then what would happen if I start talking dirty? Breathing heavily, she looked at him because she didn't even one bit expect him to talk to her this way. She expected him to be angry today because of their forced marriage. She looked at his face without blinking as his actions seemed to be very unexpected of her. Take a picture, it will last longer. Ain't you feeling any rage? Why would I be in rage during my wedding night? Young, you were forced to marry your brother's bride because he ran away. Her dark brown eyes clashed with his dark blue ones. Force, you say, a smirk appeared on his face. Where that smart wine went, she shouldn't need a lot of time to figure out and be forced, at least not into his own wedding, never. Haven't you thought yet? Who helped Hyung to run away? He refused to look away from her whereas her heart started to beat crazily. Because if her assumed answer would be true, then Yes, it was me who helped him. Yes, it was me who at last minute told him that he had a conference. Because I knew the way he's passionate about his work, he wouldn't miss the conference at any cost. He placed his one knee on the floor and placed his whole body weight on it. Then he came at her eye level. What did you think? That I will let you marry peacefully, Miss Lee? Oops, now it's... His breath was fanning against her lips. Why, why did you do this? My wife? She, she is very egoistic. She would happily sacrifice her life in a loveless marriage but would never confess that she has feelings for her enemy. A very egoistic wife of mine, very. Her breath hissed hearing his answer, whereas he placed his one hand on her waist. You, you knew. Dark brown orbs pierced into dark blue ones. Why? You didn't know that this enemy of yours was always smitten by you? He pulled her closer by her waist. He then went near her ears and said that this enemy of yours would go on his knees if you ever command him to. That this enemy of yours was always ready to offer you his utmost devotion, a devotion much sincere and stronger he offers to his almighty every day. That this enemy of yours was always ready to worship you night after night, only if he was allowed by you. Her already heated cheeks turned more red hearing him. 
He then faced her and looked into her eyes while covering her cheek with his one palm. Didn't you know this? Answer me. Unable to answer him, she just shook her head. And here I thought we were playing who would confess first. I was determined that I would win. But guess what? It was never a game to begin with. My lady didn't even know that her blue-eyed enemy was droning into her dark brown ocean. From how long this dark blue-eyed man knew that this dark brown-eyed woman had lost her heart to him? Since college days. A soft gasp lit her mouth. This long. Haven't you wondered why this enemy of yours didn't even have a single girlfriend all these years? Wondered, but then thought he must be having some colorful nights with different women every night. A visible loud gasp left his mouth. My lord, all these years I have been saving myself for my wife, and I had to hear this in reward. Aish, you wound me, you dark brown eyed dear. You wound me. Now it was her turn to gasp loudly. You, you haven't have it forced yet? Visibly offended, he shook his head. What do you think of myself, huh? Do I look like some desperate bull that I will let anyone touch me? Physical intimacy means a lot to me, Vyan. I can't have it with random stranger. To get physical, you need emotional intimacy first. I can understand. After all, these are my exact thoughts. A strong reason why I couldn't share physical intimacy with anyone, even though I tried, just to get you out of my mind. But always failed miserably each time. Aha! Uh -huh. So we both are inexperienced. Now, now, that would be a lot challenging for us, I guess. Anyways, you still haven't said thank you to me. Why? Why should I thank you? Because, dear, only because of my presence of mind, we got married. Unless you were all set to become my sister-in-law, it's not like I am asking you to accept that I am smarter than you. That I would never admit, because you were also the one who assumed that it was a competition who would confess first. If you confessed to me earlier, then I would have told my dad about you, and we would have been married. Still egoistic as ever, you are saying as if you are any less than me. Anyways, today is a special day for us. Then let me make you winner of your assumed game between us. Let me confess to you first. Nah, I have already lost the assumed game of mine. She frowned, not understanding his words. Why are you so determined to prove your stupidity today? Wait a little bit. Our whole life is left ahead for you to prove this to me. She glared at him, not liking his choice of words. Ain't you trying to act too smart today? Okay, okay. Your cheeks only should be red due to your shyness today, not your anger. Look around. Look at the bed, all wet, decorated with red and white roses. Red rose, a symbol of love. White rose, symbol of devotion. I myself have decorated all this. These are not just roses. These are expression of my feelings too. Her eyes become glossy here in this. Hey, what happened? You you never believed in language of flowers. Then you believed in it, right? She closed her the remaining distance between them and hugged him tightly. I always wanted to give red rose to you. He hugged her back and 
caressed her back. Now we all have all our life ahead. You can give me red rose, white rose, sakura, yellow camellia, violet, every flower you want. Just don't give me aconite. She couldn't help but chuckle at his remarks. Then they parted away and she looked at him. She then said while caressing his cheeks, What about cactus? His eyes widened, hearing her. Seems like someone is not shy anymore. She just playfully smiled at him in reply. After all, he just made her all worries flew away by confessing to her in a way he previously considered as stupid. You know what? We should have our wedding night now. Then we will discuss whether you should give me cactus or I should give you. It's a ritual, you know, to have a wedding night. Aha! Uh -huh, it's a wedding night, right? Then we should not delay to complete it. Right, we should not delay. They both brought their lips to closer to each other and in no time both of their lips met each other. Their first kiss. You were my gardenia, but now, from now on, you are my sunflower. Until the day I take my last breath, I will happily say this to everyone. You are my lily of the Incas, but I am sure till the time I take my last breath, I will never let myself be a lotus. Their lips met again as they dive into a world of passion and promise.